I'm broke. What started off as an amazing year has now ended up with me homeless. I have one bag to my name, no shoes, just flip-flops, and I'm going through dumpsters trying to find anything, settling for some of the grossest things you could find. I don't know where to go. I got nothing left. You don't even want to know what I'm using for hair gel right now. It's as bad as it gets. Okay, I'm not actually broke, but the downswing has me feeling like I am. Made $20,000 earlier this year. I've now lost 13, so I'm up $7,000, but I feel homeless. Turns out I'm a pretty trash poker player, but I finally hired a coach, Fausto Valdez, and it's changing my game 2,000%. What should you do with your hand? Fold, oh, good job. I've already seen a huge increase in my winnings, and now it's time to put it to the test on a live stream. On this episode, I'm heading to Jacksonville, Florida to play in the Best Bet live stream. And I know what you're thinking, who the hell voluntarily goes to Jacksonville, Florida? There's a story behind it. A follower of mine named Horseshoe serves in the National Guard over in Syria and Kuwait. He messaged me while he was overseas and said, hey, things have been kind of rough here. When I get back, I'd love to play some poker with you and meet you. And I said, absolutely. You name the time or the place. He got us set up on this live stream and he asked if I wanted to bring anybody. So I'm bringing Cairo and Sethi Poker with me. We're gonna make sure Horseshoe has a great time on the two live streams, not one, but two live streams. Hopefully I can also get myself out of this hole. Heading to Jacksonville this morning. It's like basically yesterday still. Very excited though, we're playing on the best bet stream. We're gonna force this to be a good trip because Austin was so brutal. I made it to the airport on time, that's gotta be a success. So now I just have to get there, right? Which is never easy. There's only one direct flight from Minneapolis to Jacksonville, but it was cutting it too close. As you know, I had to leave the last live stream early and I promised myself I will make it for every second of these live streams, so I can't risk it. So I decided to wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning, get a connecting flight in Atlanta, and land in Jacksonville with plenty of time to spare. I didn't communicate this with Cairo though, and he booked his connection through Minneapolis so we could fly together. He was a little bit upset. So I wake up at four, fly to Atlanta. Meanwhile, Cairo gets on a plane from LA and flies to Minneapolis. During that time, my flight lost its pilot. I don't know where he's at, I hope the guy's fine, but I get stuck forever at Atlanta. Cairo boards the Minneapolis flight and beats me to Jacksonville. Seth was supposed to be there for the first night, but something happened. Still don't know exactly what went down. So, first degen of the trip, uh, loser of this game buys the Uber. I'll pick first. I didn't pick the bad tooth. If the mouth closes on you, you lose. Nobody wants to go for the bottom. Ah, oh, me. How do I lose already? Cairo decided basically let's just keep gambling and he convinced a random Bruh. civilian, not an Uber driver, to drive us to the casino. It wouldn't be a live stream if we weren't hitting traffic. You know what, I only have one thing to say in that. Police I can't make it to a live stream without getting stuck in traffic, cutting it close. But we pull up, five minutes to spare, take our luggage right into the casino, and we sit down to play some 2-5. Where is Horseshoe at though? Turns out Horseshoe, who stayed in Jacksonville the night before and set this thing up, went to the wrong best bet. So we started playing the 2-5 stream without the fan that I flew out to meet. There's a lot going on, but I get my chips, I sit down and take a breath. It's time to implement my poker coaching and play to the best that I can. And that's what I did, utilizing squeezes, working on my ranges, making sure that I was putting as much pressure on my opponents as possible. Nobody believes Casino King's bet here, but they don't have a hand strong enough to call. I did pull off a fantastic bluff, getting one of my opponents to fold top pair. We're gonna see Casino King bluff at it now. Good bet size by Casino King. Targeting the exact type of hand that Mar has. I then ran aces into deuce four, which of course cracked my aces. But other than that, I was headed for a great night. Finally, Horseshoe sat down. We said, hey, across the table. He did end up getting stacked against Cairo, and I felt bad about that. I finished up about $900, but most importantly, as you can see, I am one step above Cairo. Number one mission was to make money this trip. Number two was to stack Cairo and Seth. Night one, I don't stack Cairo, but I play great. 
Still felt pretty good ending the live stream up. All right, we just finished up. Ended up up, which is surprising because usually I lose on these streams. But amazing people, night one, in the books. We have money left. Lights are still on. It's time to get some food. Day two, I was feeling great but somehow decided it'd be a good idea to convince Cairo to play poker before we played poker. I will say you gotta check out his video about him flopping a set and table talking this guy into punting his whole stack to him. I also sent a couple hundred dollars to Cairo, which was super frustrating. Oh, is this your chips from earlier? I'm sorry, I took those. Those are my future chips. Also, Seth just got Whoa. here. Hey, Seth. Now, Seth is a nice guy. Don't get me wrong, we're really good friends. But when I see him, I get this urge to want to stack him. Finish him! So all of a sudden, my mission changed from play the best poker possible to I want to stack my three buddies. Horseshoe, Cairo, and Seth. Side note, I feel very bad for the random people that sat down at this game thinking they were playing a normal 2-2 game. They all got stacked eventually and got up and left. The only person who didn't, shout out to the guy Boston who was sitting smack dab in the middle of the action. Tough seat draw, but he basically decided I'm going all in with this and gonna have a good night. My first major hand of the night, I have Queen Jack offsuit and end up heads up against Seth. Now, a lot of his followers have been DMing me and writing mean things in the comments about this, but here's the bottom line. The flop comes ace, queen, something, and I say something because the something doesn't matter, the ace doesn't matter, I hit a queen. Yeah, I mean, I just don't see Casino King not jamming here. And we are playing 2-2. Two, two. This money is going in the pot. So he raises, I jam all in, he calls, he's got ace, king, but the turn is a jack. Never a doubt. I stack Seth right away, poor guy. Seth did ask where the closest ATM was. Shit. Next up on the list is Cairo. He has Jack three and limps into a pot. I have Queen seven, so we might as well see a flop. The flop isn't bad. Deuce three seven. He hits mid pair. I hit top pair, and he bets out five dollars. Cairo does this thing where he just throws out five dollars randomly. I make it twenty five, and he calls. The turn is a beautiful queen, giving me two pair. I just need to fade a three. A three would be the worst card in the deck. Luckily, the river is a jack, the best card in the deck, because now Cairo has two pair, I have two pair, and we all know where this is going. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful just seeing all those chips coming over my way? Two down, and now we gotta focus on my fan and friend, Horseshoe Poker. At this point in the stream, things started getting wild. Right, we got a straddle, blind 10, blind 25, blind 60. Jeez, <laughs> oh boy. We're gonna have a big one brewing here. Uh, things are, uh, uh, things are kinda getting off the rail. I have ace five offsuit up against Horseshoe Poker who plays any two cards, deuce four offsuit. If you remember the stream before, I got stacked with deuce four, so you know it's probably coming this time. The flop is ace, eight, three, giving me top pair and horseshoe a wheel drop. The worst card in the deck for me would be a five. Gutter buffer, oh, the gutter oh. buffer, it's two pair. Absolutely brutal for me because I have two pair and I have no idea that this man has the wheel. The only thing that could save me on the river now is a five, the one card I needed to avoid and now there's only two left, but the poker gods say, let it be. Okay. Oh, oh my no. goodness. Wow. Horseshoe goes all in. I snap call. Damn, it's a spicy river. <laughs> and Horseshoe's going to have to load back up. Ba, 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 ba. Stacking all the homies. I got the receipts. Made it happen. What a night. And that leads me into the final hand of the night. I get 8-3, which Cairo has said if I win, he'll pay me a bounty. It doesn't matter how much the bounty is because anytime I'm taking Cairo's chips, it's a win for me. So I bump it up to $120 pre-flop. Some random guy at the table calls. He has ace queen. The flop is 10, three, six. I bet out $100 and he quickly re-raises me. At this point, I start putting him on a flush draw. So I decide to make the call and see what happens. The turn is clean. At this point, I kind of expect my opponent to just go all in. So I decide to beat him to the punch and rip every chip I have into the middle. He then just says, you know what? That's what I was gonna do. And tanks forever. When I say forever, you know, usually I mean a minute, two minutes. 
This took five minutes. He has ace high with a queen kicker. Obviously, when you look back at how I've been playing this hand, I don't know what he thought he could possibly be beating. Even if I have ace king, I have him beat. All of a sudden, after thinking forever, my man puts in a call. This is what dreams are made of. I just need to dodge and that ace. And the ace is oh. there. Where did that come from? Oh my gosh. Oh, it's happening again. After an insane night, I get cooler playing 8-3. Damn it, Cairo. I blame you. Fausto, my coach, if you're seeing this, I'm so sorry. Uh, ended up down. Obviously, though, the nice thing is if you look at the bottom of that screen, Cairo's at the bottom. But what was a fun night turned pretty depressing pretty quickly. All right, just finished one of the worst poker sessions of my life, and that's really saying something. No, I'm, honestly, it was a lot of fun, and uh, still kind of in some pain. After the stream, I was feeling pretty down. We all decided to go out to Korean barbecue. Tough day to poker, but we're grabbing dinner with my buddy Trey here. I think it was a good day. Oh, it was a great weekend. <laughs> great weekend. And that's when it hit me. I'm really living a pretty good life here, going out to eat with the production staff, sitting here with Seth talking about content, Cairo and Horseshoe chopping it up to the right. And I kind of rewinded and I realized I missed a very important thing about the night. Look at the top of the list there. Horseshoe Poker, the guy that had me fly out to meet him, set this whole thing up, had a huge win in night two and he had a blast and that was the whole reason for this trip. I didn't lose a bunch of money, I just wanted to win a bunch of money, and that didn't happen. But this is what I love about my job and content, making a difference in the world. If you guys don't follow Horseshoe Poker on TikTok, please check him out. He's just starting his own content. I know he's got to go back overseas here soon, but it's truly a life lesson that money isn't everything. So I played good the first night, not so good the second night, and we live with that, right? <sighs> back to coaching though, back to coaching.